Game developers are often putting things into their games that aren't immediately explainable, but sometimes they don't even really know what to say about it. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 mysterious discoveries game devs still can't explain. Starting off at number 10, Gears of War 3's Slab Easter Egg. Released as part of the Phoenix Rising DLC, the multiplayer map, The Slab, contains a few Easter eggs that people have been aware of since it came out. People thought they'd found everything there is to find, but a tweet from the creator of Gears of War made people think there was more to find. The first parts of the secret pretty well known, just kick a ball through a hole in this fence to get a rat to appear, which causes a few other mysterious changes around the map. If that sounds weirdly incomplete for a Gears of War Easter Egg, it's because no one's figured out how to finish it. Then again, the tweet from Clippy B it got deleted, and when directly asked about it, the developers don't seem to have an answer. So there it is, an Easter egg that no one can remember. Like, they can't remember what to do from there or if it's even finished. It's been years and nobody has a clear answer on this one, so I'm just gonna assume the Easter egg was either never finished or the guy that made it isn't with the company anymore and isn't interested in explaining it. The mystery of the slab remains one of the most confounding secrets in the Gears of War series, and at this point, it doesn't look like it's going to get solved anytime soon. And number 9 is Call of Duty Finest Hour, The Ghostly Room. In contrast to the last point, this easter egg is well known, but it's so weird I don't think the developers could explain it, even if they tried. Found in the underground passage level, there's a door that looks like it can't be opened, but by throwing two grenades at it, then going up to it and pressing the use button, and then throwing another grenade at it, the door finally opens. Inside is a circular room with floating candles, a little toy tank driving around, a miniature airplane zipping around, a random toilet, and a whole bunch of weird pictures. Oh yeah, there's also a giant rat under the stairs, cause yeah, why not? I mean, I, I could use a giant rat under the stairs, couldn't you? I, I don't know why I said that. There's also a cradle in the room, which has a ghost in it if you get close enough. Nearby are two bonus weapons, the Kaiser Bear and the Sticky Bear. You throw the Kaiser Bear, bounces around like crazy, and the Sticky Bear, well, it sticks to things. You get it, right? Uh, even as far as Easter eggs go, the whole thing's just a weird non sequitur that, as far as I'm aware, has never gotten a real proper explanation. It's not really a dev room. Like, there's no real reference to anything. Just a weird room with some random stuff in it. And number eight is Trepping to the Back Rooms. One of the coolest, most atmospheric Easter eggs I've seen in a while can be found in Trepping to a game that's not even technically out yet. This mysterious place can be found in the safe house location by using no clip to reach a section on the map that was previously blocked off. You go down this weird grainy hallway and you get teleported to this barren, spooky location based on the popular creepypasta. Considering this is just a little teaser demo, you would think they wouldn't go a lot further than this, but this place keeps going. There's something here that wants to kill you and things just get creepier and more abstract as you go. It's a secret that the developers could easily explain if they wanted to, but the real fun of it is exploring it yourself. As far as video game adaptions of the back rooms go, this might be the best one, and it's literally impossible to find normally. And number seven is Super Mario Galaxy 2's Hell Valley Sky Trees, a classic example of one of those mysterious things in games nobody's explained. In the level, Shiverburn Galaxy, from Super Mario Galaxy 2, there's these weird silhouettes off in the distance. They're far away, so it's unlikely you really notice them unless you look closely, but if you do, they're a little unnerving. Their sinister name, the Hell Valley Sky Trees, is actually what their texture is called in the game files, leaving players to assume that there's something evil or malevolent about them. In reality, the name Hell Valley was the working title of this level before they settled on Shiverburn Galaxy. Why these things look like aliens, I, I don't really have any idea, but that's at least why they're called that. Maybe someone at Nintendo would come out and just say what is the deal with these things, and then it would be a, a Seinfeld bit rather than a bunch of rampant speculation. But we know how Nintendo works. They're tight-lipped to a fault, so we may never really get a clear answer as to what these are or are supposed to be. And number six is Army Men Sarge's Heroes, uh, the Frankenstein developer picture. Uh, credit on this one goes to Sizable Door on YouTube, which I really gotta give it to you on your channel name, but Sizable Door. Now, the reason we're bringing this up is there's some nostalgia out there for the Army Men series of games. It's kinda gone away and uh, people remember it for fond reasons. 
Sizable Door rediscovered this Easter egg hidden in the Squirts mission of Sarge's Heroes, specifically in the Dreamcast version of the game. If you crawl under a random section of wall, you find this. It's a developer portrait, but there is something wrong with the face. I, I don't know if it's a texture glitch or what, but this is a creepy as hell developer picture. He looks like a conehead with a big old chunk of flesh stapled to the side of his head, which is gross. I, I don't know what it's doing in a game for kids. I really don't. It's old and relatively obscure though, so I don't know who to ask about it. It's one of those Easter eggs that really needs some kind of explanation, but we have still, at this point, nothing. At number 5 is Resident Evil 4's Green Jacket. Like the previous Mario example from above, this is one of those infamous secrets that a lot of people know about, but nobody can really tell you anything about it. Found in Chapter 5-4 in the area right after the part where the helicopter crashes, R.I.P. Mike. It was taken before his time! Um, you can see a mysterious figure in this green jacket off in the distance here, though. The only way to get a good look at them is to cheat, but... Doing that does not help discern their identity. The obvious answer would be it's a member of the development staff who sneakily snuck themselves into the game, but pff, that, that doesn't make their identity known. I have no idea who or what this is supposed to be. Like all Japanese developers, Capcom isn't really too forthcoming about Easter eggs, and particularly this one. So to this day, nobody really knows who this green jacket wearing person is supposed to be. And number four is Klonoa, The Secret Message. It's a classic platformer for the PS2. You can find messages all over the place in this made-up language. Eventually, fans manage to decipher the text and translate it to English. Most of it's simple signs and obvious stuff. The names of attractions in the amusement park area. But uh, there's one block of text that's pretty unique. Found inside the King of Sorrows room, this block of text has to be one of the strangest references I've ever seen in a game. The text reads, Anyone who runs is a VC. Anyone who stands still is a well-disciplined VC. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's a line from Full Metal Jacket. It's from the helicopter gunner part where the guy is yelling, get some. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. For some reason, that line about a guy shooting people he assumes are Viet Cong appears in this cute little platformer for kids. It's one of the most baffling little Easter eggs I've ever heard of, and I have no idea why it's there or what it means. Uh, the credit for finding this one goes to Cello2WC from the Untamed Hearts Klonoa forums for, you know, I guess having the time. It's just an all-around weird Easter egg. Nobody who made the game is willing to explain it, so I don't know why there's a Full Metal Jacket quote in a Klonoa game. And number three is Headless Mono in Shadow of the Colossus, a, a creepy little secret that's found in the Shadow of the Colossus demo and only in specific versions. There's a few differences in the demo compared to the main game, but one that really matters for our purposes is that if you jump diagonally, you'll never run out of stamina. Yeah, seriously. It makes climbing the shrine a, a total cakewalk, and it allows you to get up into an unfinished section of the map that would normally contain the garden. It's pretty strange to try and explore it, but the real interesting thing to find here is a headless T-posing model of Mono, the girl you're trying to save. Why it's headless and untextured, what's it doing up here, I don't know. There's nothing online explaining what this could have been used for that I can find anyways. It's probably just something unfinished that got left in the demo, I assume by mistake. But getting some kind of un uh, like official answer would of course be nice, uh, but Team Ico is gone. Uh, not that the people aren't around still, but yeah. It does seem a little bit like getting an answer is increasingly unlikely as time passes though. And number two is the creepy secret screen from Sonic CD, a legendary secret. If you access the sound test and play some specific songs, the, the screen goes blank and shows this weird image of an ugly face Sonic playing the game's weirdly ominous boss music. This single screen is responsible for traumatizing hundreds of unassuming kids in the 90s. If it doesn't seem that creepy to you now, imagine being a child trying out a secret they've heard of but never seen. It's called the Infinite Fun screen because of the message, which says, Infinite Fun, Sega Enterprises, image by Maijin. Uh, and for decades, people just wonder what the heck this screen's supposed to be. Well, in a rare instance of a Japanese dev actually explaining something, we now know that Maijin in the message is actually Masato Nishimura, a designer in Sega who's worked on multiple Sonic games. Also, the creepy music wasn't actually meant to be that creepy. The US soundtrack is actually different from the Japanese and European versions of the game, and the boss music for those is actually a lot more upbeat. Finally, the face is supposed to be a caricature of Nishimura. Why it's so creepy, I, I don't know, but basically, it does look like a nightmare. 
Uh, we know all of the what, but we don't have the why. Like, that is still a mystery, and yeah, it's bizarre. And finally, at number one is the Pool of Forgetfulness from Morrowind. Found in a small cave near the Ghost Gate, this mysterious thing in Morrowind seems to serve no purpose whatsoever. It's literally called the Pool of Forgetfulness, which, yeah, it's got a unique model, but doesn't seem to do anything. Seriously, nobody seems to know what the deal is with this thing. There's lots of speculation out there, like it might have been part of a faction questline, but nobody really knows. Apparently, the developers were even interviewed directly about this, and they just acted like they didn't know what it was. Like they forgot, like a pool of forgetfulness got to them or something, you know? Uh, it might have been a joke. Uh, really, the, the pool itself might have been a joke. They might have left it in the game as like a joke about unfinished content that gets left in games. I don't know. As far as I can tell, uh, this interview's been scrubbed to the internet. So all I have to go on is some half-remembered Reddit posts. So that may not exist as well. All anyone really knows is this thing exists in a random spot in Morrowind. And it serves absolutely no purpose. Uh, I know the stories about the main writer of Morrowind, Michael Kirkbride, uh, and him being high on drugs for the entire production are more or less pretty greatly exaggerated. But I, when I find stuff like a pool of forgetfulness in some random spot on the map that has a new model but doesn't do anything, I do wonder what the devs were on when they made the game. What do you think, though? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.